to another Tech Byte video from CMG. My name is Victor Lara, and today I will show you how to use formulas to create or edit properties in Builder. The Formula Manager is a module where the users can calculate the array properties based on other properties in the dataset. Builder provides a dialog box through which you can create the formulas that describe these functional or mathematical relationships. Once a formula has been created, it can be assigned to an existing or custom property, and once you have applied the formula to a property, you can view that property in the Builder Properties section. Formulas can also be copied or deleted, and the rest of the property is still maintained. This is how the Formula Manager looks like in Builder. On the left side, you have the Formula Tree View. All the formulas that were created by the user will be displayed here. And in the right side, you have three different boxes. The first one is to input the formula name for the formula you are actually creating. Uh, then you have the independent variable section. Here you will add all the variables that will be part of your mathematical expression. On the third box, you, uh, you will need to write or to type in the mathematical expression. For that purpose, you can use your keyword or you can use these buttons uh, down here. As you see, there are more complex mathematical uh, uh, operators or even logical operators if your formula is complex enough and requires the use of them. Once you have typed in your formula, you will need to click the button Apply and the button OK and the formula will be saved and displayed in the Formula Tree View. In today's demo, I will show you uh, three, different, th three different examples uh, on, on the use of, of the Formula Manager. The first one will be to redefine the permeabilities of our reservoir as a function of porosity. Uh, the second one is to calculate the flow capacity of, the, of our reservoir. This is a very basic calculation which implies the multiplication of the grid thickness times the neck to growth and the horizontal permeability. For our third example, we'll be calculating the mobile oil volume at the end of our uh, history match. The mobile oil, oil volume is a, is a simple calculation as well, uh, which is uh, the pore volume times the saturation of oil at this date minus the residual oil saturation to water. This will be displaying how much mobile oil is left at the end of the history match. Okay, this is our model. Where we will be showing the, the three examples I mentioned before. Uh, the first one is to redefine the permeability values in this model. So as you can see here, we have already defined the permeability in the I direction, in the J direction, and in the K, sorry, in the K direction. Okay, so the first things uh, to do here is to delete the permeability. So we come here to the Array Properties section, we right click on it, go to the Delete option, and we hit the permeability in the J and the K direction. So as we delete them, we see that this error uh, sign appear here because the permeability values in the J and K direction were deleted. We also need to delete the permeability in the I direction as well. So we right click on, on, on the permeability in the I direction, hit the delete button, we choose the permeability property and we click OK. So with this, uh, we have deleted the permeability in the three directions. We are going to redefine the permeability now using a more complex uh, expression or mathematical expression that depends on the reservoir porosity. The reservoir porosity is already defined in our model. So we need to go to the Formula Managers. For that, go to Tools, Formula Manager, and we are going to create a new formula. The new formula will be called Perm E. And we'll have only one independent variable on it that will be the porosity or our reservoir porosity. Now we need to write the, the mathematical expression. The mathematical expression I show you in the PowerPoint slide is, is this one. Uh, I already copied the, the mathematical expression and I will uh, input the mathematical expression of or the formula 
uh, in here so this mathematical expression uh, it's exactly as what I just typed in here so I'm, I'm gonna click apply okay and okay again and uh, I will assign this new formula to the permeability property here I just need to delete this and right click on the whole grid section of the permeability in the I direction and I will select the formula that I just created for the J direction uh, permeability in the J direction I will use the same formula and I can select the formula here or simply uh, you can use this uh, option equals E uh, uh, with this option the, the permeability in the J, the J direction will take exactly each value of the permeability in the I direction uh, for the permeability in the K direction we will use a KB KH value of 20% of the permeability in the I direction so for that reason right click on the whole grid uh, section of the K uh, direction permeability we select equals E and then uh, we will use this uh, multiplier and we will multiply it by 0.2 or 20% of the I direction so we click OK and the three permeabilities are going to be populated and calculated using the formulas and the operators I selected so this is the permeability how the permeability looks like or the new values looks like in our model using the mathematical expression I, I used or selected In our second example, uh, we are going to create the flow capacity property. This property doesn't exist in our previous defined uh, reservoir property, so we have to create not only the formula, we have to assign this formula to a new custom property for us to be able to see the, the flow capacity formula in the property section of Builder. So let's start going to the formula manager uh, here we need to create a new formula and we'll be naming this formula flow capacity sorry capacity uh, as I mentioned before this formula or this flow capacity calculation uh, will depend on the grid thickness the net to gross ratio and the permeability uh, in the I direction so let's add these three properties to to our independent variable list so let's go first with uh, grid thickness which has the x0 name uh, then we will need to add the net to gross ratio which is x1 and then we will be adding the permeability which uh, will be x2 so the flow capacity calculation is a calculation is a very simple calculation and is only multiplying these three independent variables all together so the formula actually will look like x0 times x1 times x2 this is this is all that we need to do to create the flow capacity um, we will go into click apply and OK and then we need to assign this formula to a new custom property so to do that you go again to the specify property section in this list you won't find any flow capacity property so you have to create a new one so go to the very top of the list and let's click on add new custom property so this custom property will be named like flow capacity as well we click OK and the property is created so now we just need to assign the formula we just uh, created a few minutes ago which is called flow capacity we click OK OK again <clears throat> and OK a third time now we just need to uh, calculate 
uh, what we just did right now. Uh, I'm gonna untick and uncheck the permeability in the J and K direction. We don't need to recalculate them as they uh, only depend on the permeability in the I direction and this one hasn't changed anymore. Uh, and now click the OK button. So this here is the flow capacity property calculation and you can see as it varies along the uh, vertical layers. So it's, a, it's a, an example of how, how good or how bad a, a, a grid reservoir block will have uh, the, the capacity to flow the, the, the oil that is contained in it. Okay. So let's do a 3D view of the property and let's modify the, the color scale to a, a logarithmic scale just to see it a bit better. So this is how the flow capacity formula looks like after we, de, de, we do the, the change in the uh, color scale. In this third example, we're going to calculate the mobile oil volume. Mobile oil volume, uh, as we saw earlier, is uh, it's the multiplication of the pore volume times uh, the oil saturation at the year 2020 or the date uh, we selected for this calculation minus the residual oil uh, saturation. To get the residual oil saturation, uh, we go to the rock fluid data. Uh, we see when the relative permeability to oil gets zero and the value of the residual oil saturation is one minus the water saturation, in this case is 40% or one minus 0 0.6, 0 0.4 of residual oil saturation. Uh, the pore volume and the oil saturation at the year 2020, we need to get it from the results of our history match. After we run our data set and we produce the results, uh, we can extract from there uh, the pore volume and the oil saturation at the year 2020. So let's get this uh, property first. Uh, for that, we need to import them from the result file. So go to the option file, import from another file, and we select the option special properties. On the file section, we browse for the result file, and all the all the properties that are available in the result files are going to be displayed displayed in this list. So the first property to be imported is the net pore volume or the pore volume. So we go and search for that property. Okay, we have it here, net pore volume, and we add it to a new custom property. And let's call it, sorry, pore volume. And we add it to the selected list. Uh, the second property we need for our calculation is the oil saturation, but at a specific date, which is oil saturation at the year 2020, February 2020. So we select the property oil saturation at the year 2020 and we put it in a new custom property. So let's say oil saturation at 2020. Once we have the, the custom property uh, available, we add it to the selected list and we match it with the oil saturation at the year 2020 and we imported these two properties. So here you see the, the pore volume. And if I select the oil saturation at the year 2020 is this property here. Okay. So let's do our calculation right now. In this case, I need to go again to the formula manager. I will create a new formula. This formula is going to be called mobile oil saturation at 2020. And it's going to depend on two properties that we just imported, which is the first one, pore volume, and the second one, uh, oil saturation at the year 2020. So the formula, again, is as I'm showing you in the screen right now. Uh, let's write it into the formula syntax box. So it's x0, 
times all saturation, which is x1 minus 0.4, which is the residual all saturation. So I'm going to apply it. And now we need to add this new formula to a new custom property. So let's go to the specify section. Uh, go again to the top of the list to add a new custom property and let's call this custom property mobile oil at 2020 okay so this formula this property is going to be calculated using the the recent recently created formula which is this mobile oil saturation and we just click OK. So this is our mobile all volume. Uh, the higher the number and uh, the higher the number means that there is still mobile oil that hasn't been drained or produced. So if you're looking to focus on certain areas on your reservoir, uh, these are the, the, the zones you are looking for to put new wells to drill new wells or to uh, make part of a, an enhanced oil recovery uh, a scenario okay so this is all for now and if you like the video please consider subscribing to our channel thank you very much